Good evening. Thank God for bringing us this evening. May God's name be praised. Let us pray. Father, we appreciate you. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord, for the grace to be here this evening. Please accept my praise and thanks in Jesus' name. Lord, please use me once again for your glory. <coughs> Not just today alone, oh Lord. Continue to use me for your glory. Please fill me with the power of God so that I can be able to be manifesting your glory in the name of Jesus. Have your way. Father, speak through me. Let the Spirit of God go out through this message to the hearts of everyone and let it bring people to yourself in the name of Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Take charge. Take all the glory. Please, God, don't let us fail you. Don't let us be of our own. All these things are teaching us with our own strength, with our own power, we cannot do it. But with the power of God, we can do it. Please come and help us. Please help me too. Please take all the glory. Let the power of God flow through this world. Let it heal souls. Let it bring people to yourself. And I myself, don't let me leave the side of God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Yeah, good evening. <laughs> I'm going to explain everything as it is. I will not hide myself. So today, I woke up feeling tired because I had a few hours to pray in the night. So... And I don't know why. I'm still praying to God. Why is it that when I pray in the night, I wake up tired? <laughs> because it's not supposed to be so. Night prayer is good now. Why? So why did I get tired? Because I woke up in the night. So while I was in my trying to recover state, I, I was watching a lot of things. And then the topic came. But I forgot. <laughs> When it was time to come online now, I started asking God, God, I forgot to, I forgot the topic, I started praying, hey, that is God, and that was how God brought back the topic, I'm so grateful to God, and gave me Bible passages, gave me songs, and uh, I want to say something about this topic before we start it, you see, by the grace of God, these teachings are Things that almost most of the churches today that are popular churches, I don't know about those churches that are not popular, maybe they still talk about the truth of the word of God, but most of the popular churches that their pastors are celebrity pastors, they don't preach these things anymore. In fact, that was exactly what. God had to tell me when I was asking for the topic again that it is, and it was preparing me and giving me things to say. That these are the things to encourage people to stay on the side of God. It's not easy. Nobody says it's going to be easy staying on the side of God. I've shared some of my experiences. They are not easy. It's not easy watching your friends making it and then you are there saying God will do it, God will do it I can't sin against God it's not easy but with encouragement from the word of God like this you just find out that the grace of God will be there for you and then you overcome so today's message is another message of encouragement to people out or anyone out there that is at the edge of turning back from the way of the Lord to have riches or fame or wealth outside the will of God. I really wish that God will start blessing people for real, for real, from his own side, so that People can be fully convinced that, yes, it's possible to have blessings from the Lord. Like someone like me, I've told God, God, I want you to use my life to prove to people that you bless people that stay with you. By the grace of God, I will not do charm. I will not do occultist. I will not do batting demonic soap. I will not do fraud. I will not do scamming. I will stay with God. I want to see how God does it. So that it can be possible for me to speak it in my mouth that, yes, the Lord can bless you without bowing down to the devil. So one of the videos I watched today where the topic came from, 
I watch several videos actually, and many of them are kind of related. But let me talk about a specific one out of it. That is a gospel singer. Yeah, gospel singer, and then because of fame, because we want people to know you. Of course, we get we all get to that point. Look at somebody like me now. I'm making content online. Don't I want it that people will a lot of people like millions will be watching my videos? Of course I do. I see post of um Dusio Yekon within a within few hours or even within few days, he's already in millions. I see post of people like Nathan Bassi within few days or few hours his post is 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 uh, is flourishing. A lot of people have watched it. Moses Bliss too. I see a lot of things like that. Don't I want it? I want it. I also want it. So you are there doing content. It's not flourishing. It's not doing anything. People are not listening to it. You see, this is what God told me. He said, be, when Jesus is lifted up, he will draw all men unto himself. I'm talking about my own ministry or about my own self. When Jesus was talking to me about him lifting me up, he said, what a lot of people don't know is that when you lift Jesus up, Jesus will lift you up. When Jesus is the center of your ministration, Jesus himself will lift you up. There's no way. Look at the glory of Jesus Christ. Almost in, in every household, people know about Jesus. That, is, that shows how his glory is. It may look like I'm doing it. Nobody is hearing about it. People will hear about it. You see, this recently, I started seeing my post that at least somebody will watch. It's no longer like before that. I will do it. Nobody will, will look at it. That is how it works. And many of them don't even comment. That is to say that they are watching it from their secret places. You understand? You may be thinking, ah, this thing I'm doing, nobody is talking about it. Hey, maybe I should do it the way the world is doing it. Like some gospel singers that call themselves gospel singers, who I'm not really calling them gospel singers on, on I see them on TikTok. You will not know they are different between worldly singer or gospel singer. Every time, tumba, tumba, tumba. some of them will even do birthday song for, for celebration of somebody. And they will claim they are doing gospel at the same time. They go for parties, they go for all these things. It's no longer in crusades, it's for exciting the body. <laughs> you have to be careful though. And then you are there in your corner. You not think, should I be praising human beings or I should be praising God? Or I should be I should be telling people about the salvation of Jesus. That's why I like Evangelist Ujwade song. Till now, if you still upload any song now, because I'm following him on um, YouTube, it will still be gospel message. He has not joined Tungba Tungba Gospel. He's still preaching the truth of the gospel. So you are there, you are thinking, should I change the standard a little bit? You don't need to help God. Allow Jesus to lift you up. When it is Jesus that you are lifting high, he will definitely pull you up to himself. Don't follow the the trend of the world. Okay, now people are making it online by following a particular trend. Let's say TikTok. You know, sometimes some people will do a trend and that is where they will have their followers. Then you as a child of God, are you supposed to change the standard from the things of God to that trend? No. You're supposed to stay on that thing of God. And it's one of the Bible passages God gave me today. Even though I'm still thinking we should sing our song before we do, we do the singing. He said, the world passes away and everything with it. But he that stand with God, stand forever. We still read it by God's grace. So what is he trying to say? He's trying to tell us that we should not love the world though. We should not love the things of the world. We should allow God to bless us. Let me see how many minutes I've used.
Uh, nine minutes. Thank God, I've not talked too much. So the man that I'm talking about, that that God pointed my attention to. He went and made deal with the devil. Of course he was suffering. He didn't have things. But maybe if he had listened to a type of message like this, the grace to stand in the face of trouble, of trials would have come that day. And that man lured him. He said, I'm also a gospel minister. I'm also a gospel singer. Let me take you to our club. And that was how he was initiated. And they slept with him as gay. From his behind. And his fame started going, going up, going higher. But he said he is no longer serving God. Whenever he sings songs out, people will think he's praising God Almighty. But he's no longer God Almighty. It's the devil is praising. And people will be worshipping the devil with him whenever they sing the songs. Are you seeing it now? You know he has lost all the plan of God for his life. So that's why messages like this is coming out. That peradventure, peradventure you are, you are, you are also somebody that wants to work for God. You don't have to help God. No need. Allow God to do it for you. So that's why this message is coming out. God is the one that is the author of this message because I had to pray and pray and pray before I can even remember the topic. I completely forgot. So it was God that brought it afresh so may god teach us let's first of all sing some gospel songs of we will stand for the lord you know these gospel songs are songs of god i will be yours forever god help us so let's first of all take this one ah what's that second one that's why i don't want to to cover it with another searching I know I've covered it, but let's first of all, let's first of all sing this one. The second one I will, I think I'll remember. God will remind me. <laughs> I'll remember. I have fished my 13 billion. I'm coming. Let's first of all sing this one. We are bound for Canaan land, tenting by the way. Who shall lead us on the road? Choose your king today. There to stand like Joshua, there to say the word. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. Many trials we have seen, those far on our way. He hath led us safely through, shall he lead to them. There to stand like Joshua. Dare to say the word. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. When the dark red sea of doubt billowed in our way, then he passed every way, so he will today. Dare to stand like Joshua, dare to say the word. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. Can we safely trust her guide? Who knows not the way? God has traveled every foot. Shall he lead today? Dare to stand like Joshua. Dare to say the word. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. <sighs> Excuse me. Just before us, Jordan rose right across the way. We can safely trust the Lord, He shall lead today. Dare to stand like Joshua, dare to say the word. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. I hope, I hope you are. You are understanding the lyrics. I don't want to talk too much because of time so that we can have time to read Bible passages. You see, he said, even when the dark red sea of doubt billowed in our way, he said then that he parted everywhere. 
is this word of God that will come out on the day of trials and temptations like that, that will, that will make doubts to part ways, even though they are so strong like the Red Sea. It's the word of God like this. And that's why God is sending it out. You may not even be going through situations like that, but if you go and stay somewhere in your heart, if you go and stay somewhere in our hearts, so that on the day of temptations, if you rise up and help us to overcome, I'm telling you, that's how God works it in my life. The day of trials and temptations that is so difficult to overcome, the word of God will just stand there, gidiba, gidiba, and if you help me, to stand. So, may God help us. Uh, I've seen the song. Let's sing the other song because it's also a powerful song. May God help us. Uh, it says, I long ago left Egypt for the promised land. I trusted in my Savior and to his guiding and he led me out to victory through the great Red Sea. I sang a song of triumph and shouted, I am free. I'm sorry, is it not too high? (laughs) I don't want it to be too high. I sang a song of triumph and shouted, I am free. You need not look for me. It's too low. (laughs) What do we do now? You need not look for me down in Egypt sand. For I have pitched my tent. Far off in Bula land, you need, you need not look for me down in Egypt sand, for I have pitched my tent far off in Bula land. The thing is, I'm avoiding the head voices. <laughs> I'm actually a soprano singer, but I'm avoiding using head voice. Maybe we should do it. Okay, let's do it with head voice. But please, in case. It's not sounding nice. Let me know so that next time I don't use the head voice. I followed close beside him and the land soon found. I did not halt or tremble for Canaan I was bound. My guide I fully trusted and he led me in. I shouted hallelujah. My heart is free from sin. You need not look for me down in Egypt sand, for I have pitched my tent far up in Bela land. You need not look for me down in Egypt sand, for I have pitched my tent far up in Bela land. I started for the islands. Where the fruits are bound. I pitched my tent near Hebron. Their grapes of ash cold found. With milk and honey flowing. And new wine so free. I have no love for Egypt. It has no charms for me. You need not look for me. Down in Egypt sand. For I have pitched my tent far up in Bula land. You need not look for me down in Egypt sand. For I have pitched my tent far up in Bula land. My heart is so enraptured as I press along. Each day I find new blessings which fill my heart with song. I'm ever marching onward to the land on high. Someday I'll reach my mansion that's builded in the sky. You need not look for me down in Egypt sand. For I have pitched my tent far up in Beulah land. You need not look for me down in Egypt sand, for I have pitched my tent far up in Beulah land. 
Sorry, I was avoiding that <laughs> eye pitch <laughs> because I so that it did not look like I can't hear what you are saying. But please, in case you didn't hear, let me know in the comment section. And if you heard me, then that means the song was okay. We thank God for that. I wanted the voice, the wordings to come out, not the I, I, I. That's why I, I always <laughs> want to use voice of talking to sing. But it's always different. May God help us. So we can see in that um, lyrics, may God help us, of somebody that is denying Egypt and saying, I'm pressing onward to the promised land. I told you also about a pastor that is always saying, and if you are a Christian, you are serving God, you will get to heaven, no? But what about in the world? And this message is always scary to me, like, what are you trying to say? Are you trying to say somebody should should look for riches of the world and forsake heaven or what? You see, this person in this song that we just sang, that's why I said all these gospel songs of the past, they are very, very powerful. They are very timely. Look at what they even wrote there. It's a timeless truth. They wrote it on that idea. You see, they, they, this, these songs, they are gospel songs of God, I will continue to look forward to the promised land. What was the promised land? Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you. If it were not so, I would have told you. That is where God wants our focus to be, not on the world. And by saying that, let's read the Bible passage to remind ourselves again. You know, it's very... It's very easy to forget because we are actually in the world and we meet people of the world and we have needs. That's why we, we easily forget. We have needs. We are human beings. We have things that we need. Imagine I graduated some years ago now. Many of my friends, are they have jobs, they are making money. Some have cars. But the part is different. Some of them, their own part is all their life, they should just be... Working for somebody, me, I don't know how to work for somebody. Anytime I try it, God punish me for it. God will make the person to either send me away, number one. Number two, they will want to press me down so much that I will, I will want to be an opposite of whom I'm really supposed to be. And when I realize that it's God punishing me, I have to stop. So if you are that kind of person that you like people pressing you down, you will definitely have a job, you will be making some money. They will even uh, march on you, step on your head, sit on your head. You will still stay on the job. I can't because that is not the path God has for me. So now on the path that I, I, want, to, I want to walk now, will it be easy doing it all alone without, without, all the, without any money, without any help from anywhere, just looking up to God for help? It will not be easy. It won't be easy. But yet, if we continue on that path, there will be success. When our focus is on the Lord, is on God, is on I want to please the Lord in this world. Please don't listen to pastors that are preaching those things. Oh, that man of God I'm talking about. We'll be saying it as if it's a sin, it's a crime to, to be saved or to remain in the Lord. You know, when a pastor is saying something like that, he's trying to, to say that you have to get rich at all costs in the world. He will say, you, we have a salvation, we only take you to heaven. That's all. Uh-uh. When God said, seek for the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is the portion of the children of God to be blessed. Now, he said, let your life be cheerful. That is to the sinners he gives travel. He said, blessed are, are those, blessed is the man that walketh in the way of the Lord. That's Psalm 1. I can't remember how it's called very well. It's a blessed is that man that doesn't walk in the way of sinners. That doesn't sit in the sins of the scoffer. Which means you are blessed. To the sinners is given travel. There is no peace for the wicked. The wicked shall die. Those are the things that God said about the wicked. And then the pastor is now telling you, because you are saved, you are not going to be blessed. You will only get to heaven. That is a false teaching. It's just a teaching to, to make you want to sin against God because he himself has sinned against God. So anybody listening to his message, 
Also, we must know the value of, of obeying God. That's why we have to be careful. May God help us. So we want to read a Bible passage to encourage us about that topic. He said, First John chapter 2 from verse 15 to 17. Love knows the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, uh, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. You see, that's what I'm trying to say about that pastor. He's always talking about uh, when he entered the first class, when somebody carried his bag. When somebody that he knew before that he was poor came to meet him in first class and said, Ah, you have passed us. That is pride of life. The Lord is saying it's of the world. It's not of God. Then verse 17 and says, And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. You know, I've said it before. Like Jesus said, If we lift him up, he will lift us up to himself. You will always be relevant. Or let me say, we will always be relevant if our focus in our administration is Jesus. If it's not the world, if it's not what is reigning in the world now, what are people doing in the world now? Because your own administration is from a source that is not in the world, that is in heaven. So may God help us. He said that do the will of God, abide forever. May God help us. So what that passage is trying to tell us that? You should stay with the Lord. You should not go away from the Lord. You should not allow the love, the lovely things of the world, the love of the world, to take our our focus from God. That's what I say that when I'm tempted, my brother, God give me that grace to say no. When we are tempted, God gives us the grace to say no. The grace to say no. When when somebody comes to you and say, you, I have I have passed through such situation. I remember one time somebody came to, somebody was talking to me saying, will you be doing this thing to make money? The money is huge. I'm not going to be poor, but what about the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord will, will, will vanish out of my heart. I said, no, I don't want. I can't do it. I would prefer this um, cleaning job because that time I was doing cleaning. I would prefer this cleaning job to that option. Did I suffer? Yes, I suffered. But did God continually come through as my holy no? Yes. He always come through. I said it on yesterday's uh, sexual purity video. I said God will always come through. It will look like God, this is not easy. But you will always see God in it. Sometimes when you are going through something, it doesn't mean that God has left you. We heard about we read about Joseph, even in the prison. Even when he was in Potiphar's house, it was, they said, and the Lord was with Joseph. You hear that? I'm looking for this Bible passage. And afterwards, to stand. <laughs> Wherefore, and having dog all to stand. Okay, I've seen it. That's uh, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. So God is helping us. I mean, God is telling us that you can be passing through difficulties and God is with you. It doesn't mean that God has left you. If you have to pass through it to the better, better experiences and you still have your salvation, it's better. It's better than saying, no, I don't want to pass through the difficult time. And then because you don't want to pass through the difficult time, you lose God out of your life. You don't know that people that are going to depression that are going to several things is because God is not in their life. That's why they are going into depression. But in your difficult times, Jesus is there with you. He's encouraging you. He's giving you promises of of greatness, of good things. <laughs> I told I told us about the testimony of that Afasuli. Anytime I look at his his post on my Facebook, now I'm always thanking God for his life. There was a time it was it was as if he was going to go down completely. Now his glory is shining. Every time he posts, now he posts about ministration that he's doing in different places. That is God. And he remained on that spot when his, his younger brother left him as if the whole ministration should run down. The Lord of the Lord 
made him to stand. He got a post. Let's read this Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the all armor of God, that he may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. You see that we don't. Uh, we are not going to read all the things that God said we should use on ourselves to stand. That's not where we are going to. What we are going to, in particular, is take the hammer of God on you. Those things that will help you to stand in the evil days. Let it always be with you. Our pastors are no longer preaching these things now. In fact, whenever I listen to some of these preachings on, on, on YouTube, I'm like, what's this sermon? They will be talking about, about fellow pastors. They will be talking about government officials. They will be talking about somebody that is talking about them online. They will be talking about celebrities. They will be talking, ah, what happened to all this? Stand on the day of trouble. Take the armor of God. In fact, there are a lot of verses in that Ephesians 6 that we can talk about. It says we rest to know again flesh and blood. They will not teach you all these things. They will not teach you all this. There are six verses from that verse 14. There are six lessons from that verse 14 that we can even learn. All those things we need to use to guide ourselves. The place he said the word of God. Another place he said the preparation of the gospel of peace. We should use it on our feet. That is continually preaching the truth. You don't know that as I'm preaching like this. It's also another way of God helping me to stand for him. Yes. Reading the Bible. Uh, faith. The law inside our faith with truth. Breastplate of righteousness. All these things. I just say, they are the things that will help you on the day of trouble. You think it's easy? You think it's easy that you are left alone in the house with a man, and then you don't sleep with the man. You leave the house as you came there without sleeping with the man. Go and ask 10 people and, and ask them, maybe it's, 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 it's easy like that. It is this armor of God that you use to, uh, to protect yourself that will help you to stand in that day. Or you think it's easy that, that I'm suffering, I don't have food, I don't have anything, and somebody offered me a job that will take me out of poverty and I will not have to, to labor before I feed myself, and then I still say, no, I prefer to suffer. You think it's easy? <laughs> you think it's easy like that? It's not easy. It's not easy. It is all this uh, covering ourselves with the, with the whole armor of God. It is this taking all the whole armor of God that will help us to stand in the evil days. Evil days will always come. What are the evil days? The days where you cannot pay your rent. And a man is asking you to come and sleep with him so that he give you money for that rent. Those are the evil days. And then you choose to say, no, I will not. It's an evil day. They will send you out. I experienced this several times. You know, my head will be aching as if God... Please just come through for me. I remember one of the videos I did then. I was crying on that live video. God, because of rent. Because of house rent. And I, this is me. I cannot sleep with man for money. You understand? And God did come through. You understand? He still came through. But I was just overwhelmed by the situation. I was imagining because I've experienced been sent out several times. So that time again, I was like, if I'm sent out again, God, how am I going to do it? The pain, the emotions, even doing the work of God would not be possible. Ah, no, I, I went through a lot. Oh. I went through a lot. But God has plans. I'm not, they're not telling us that we should suffer. I'm not, I'm not encouraging us to suffer. But I'm just trying to tell us that if we have to pass through it, because we choose to, to obey God. Look at what Joseph passed through. Because he will not sleep with his boss wife. Was it easy? It's easy to read. And he went to the prison and he came out and became prime minister. But was it an easy experience? It wasn't easy. Somebody that was in his father's house that his father was caring for him and loving him. And then they took him to slavery. It's no longer the same life. And from that slavery, they went and put him in the prison. For sin, he did not commit. Was it easy? It's not easy. But God had to make him pass through it. Because the Bible said in one place, he said, after he has been tried, that was when he was now lifted up. It means we must pass through it. 
There's no way we want to do it. See if you don't want to pass through it. He said, without the cross, there is no crown. Even Jesus Christ, before his name became the name that every name was bowed to, he passed through it. It didn't just happen anyhow. So another Bible passage again we want to read is that First Timothy. It's just to remind us about the about the some of the temptations we can encounter. So that we can get ourselves ready. So that we don't fall into those sins. May God help us. That's first Timothy chapter four, verse um verse one. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving it to seduce spirits and doctrines of devils. Speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Sure you are seeing it. What is it trying to say? It's saying that we should not be among those that will depart from the faith. Even if we are going to a church that their heart is their conscience is seared with hot iron. Like that pastor now that is preaching fallacy against the word of God. His conscience is already seared. They lose conscience completely just to feed their stomach. Can we eat more than our stomach can take? Since morning, I've not eaten. I didn't eat since morning. And this evening when I ate, I could not eat more than what my stomach can take. So why why do you not want to, to, to be doing things against the will of God to feed your stomach? You can't feed more than yourself. So may God help us. So that's it. He's reminding us that we should take heed though, in the latter days so, a lot of people will depart from the faith. So don't think, ah, they are still, they are still in faith. It says seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. There will be doctrines of devils. They will tell you, I'm also a Christian like you now, but with this pre-knowledge that seducing spirits will be out, doctrines of devils will be out, we should, we should guard ourselves against them. When they are coming towards us, we should remain standing. These are the things God wants us to stand against in these latter days. May God help us. He said they will be speaking lies in hypocrisy. You will think they are saying the truth, but it's all hypocrisy, it's all lies. And their conscience has been seared with hot iron. Imagine somebody's conscience seared with hot iron. They can they will do anything. They will <clears throat> by the time they put lies down, you will think it's the truth. They will even say that. That Jesus child, that Jesus Christ appeared to them yesterday night. That you should come and put money in their hands. And where else is not the truth? Because their conscience is seared with hot iron. They lie and lie and lie. But may God help us. May God keep us. So these are the things God wants us to stand against. Let's go to the Bible passage that I also thought we should read. And that is in... Uh, Second Timothy chapter 4 verse, verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own loss shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. Hmm. You see that now? Let's read that verse 5 with it. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Do you see the word of God coming out to us again? He's saying that you will see congregations, they will pack themselves full to a pastor. But they don't want to listen to the truth. So don't always think, ah, the population is plenty. Ah, it must be a true man of God. It doesn't follow like that. It might be, we have congregations like that, and all of them, they don't want to hear the truth. They just want to be following after him for, for the first things he's teaching them. Because they don't want anybody to, to talk against the things that they are doing that is sinful. Imagine the things that God is leading me to preach now. Especially on that sexual purity video. A lot of people... You know many times after watching some of the videos of what people are doing on TikTok, that's when the topics come. And God will just bring out the topic from it. So it's like I'm, I'm attacking those things that they are feeling comfortable about. And then you are trying to tell them what you are doing is wrong from what you are preaching. 
They will not come to you next time now. It says the grace of God to go and convince them and that. Go and listen to the truth of the word of God. But you see some of places, they want to remain in the world, they want to remain in sin, and they still want to claim to be Christians. Imagine that. That's why you see the likes of, of uh, what was his name? Banky W, who is a musician of, of uh, worldly, worldly musician that is claiming that he's pastor. That is how they want it to be. Look at when... Hmm. And many, many like that. You see how they are, the gospel artists, how they are inviting them to, to come and sing at wedding ceremonies. I'm not saying it's bad, though. But the holiness and the, and the godliness, they want it to be the same. Like, we are the same. There's always difference. When you say you are a gospel singer, you are, you are, a, you are a celebrity of the world. There's always difference. It's not the same. There's no place that they always meet. But nowadays, they are making everybody to meet at the same time, at the same place. It's not the will of God. When you want to stand for the truth, you can't be loved. They didn't love Jesus. So if you find out that you are speaking the truth and they are already loving you, go and check yourself. Maybe you are not speaking the truth. Maybe you have left Jesus Christ. You are already preaching what the world wants to hear. And Jesus' teaching is not what the world wants to hear. It's always what Father wants people to hear. That's why I don't follow any trend. I don't do any all this trend on things. I can't even do it. The spirit to do it did not come inside me. You see all the time that I have to to do podcast, I have to do Bible teaching, I have to do sexual purity video. That I will be looking for how to do trend. I will be dancing like like a, a playful person online. I don't have that strength. I don't have that time. This is extra time does not is not there. If I'm I'm not doing anything online, I'm probably gaining back my energy. Maybe I lost. So when I did through one of the ministrations I did, like this one now, I know I'll still have to relax a little, but I've reserved some energy so that I can do night prayers. I, I like that night prayers of yesterday night. You understand? So which extra time do I want to use and, and do another thing that God has not asked me to do? So that's what we are trying to say. Those are the things that will equip you on the day that temptations will come. On the day that somebody will come and try to convince you to sin against God, the power of God will just come out. It's not once, it's not twice that they have tried to convince me to, to step forward from, from uh, poverty into wealth. But the wealth is a wealth that will make me sin against God. I kept on believing that there will be a way. They will have, make another excuse for me. I will, I will say, God can make a way. Is it difficult for God to make a way? I suffer for it, but does it, will God still make a way? Yes, he will still make a way. I will still become rich eventually. The Lord has promised me all these things. And that is the promise of God. He said, those, is, you see that Psalm 1, maybe we should read it again. Let's read it. Because I don't want to misquote it. I've been misquoting it since morning. He says it shall be like a tree flourishing. Flourishing, his leaves shall not dry. When you are your lifting is according to the trend of the world, that's first John chapter two. He said if if, if if the world passes away, it means once that trend goes away, you are you, your glory has gone in here. But if your glory is is from doing the things of God, you will continue to flourish. Let's quickly read it, it's very short. Blessed is the man, Psalm 1 from verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. Are you seeing this now that your pastor that are saying eh, salvation will only give you heaven, that it will not give you blessing, that they are not saying the truth. It's when you sin against God that God will punish you. But when you stay with God, they say you are blessed. That is the promise of God. Don't listen to these false teachings, please. Let's listen to the teaching of the Lord through his word. That's why God is sending messages like this out. In fact, I want God to continue to use me more and more to remind us of the teachings of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Then verse 2 says, But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. Then verse 3, where we are going to stop, he said, And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. 
that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Do you see that? If your fruit has not started coming out yet, it means it's not yet your season. And it's not even as if the fruit has not started coming out. Maybe it's, it has not started having large congregation. Look at it now. Like I said, at least some people are getting blessed. Like on TikTok now, some people will say amen to my video. Is it not bringing fruit in their life that they said amen? It's bringing fruit already. It will continue to yield fruit. He said, his leaf also shall not wither. What does that mean? You will not run dry. You will not, you will not go off with trend. Once the trend goes off like this, the person leaves. But for you, because your, your source is in the Lord, your, your source is, is, is from a, a water that, is, that is, is like from a tree that is by the riverside. I be aware of how the devil says it. Like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The rivers of water does not get dry. It means the source is from God. God does not get dry. God is not like a trend. It's, it's, God is what everybody will always have. And that's what, what Jesus was telling me. that If you lift Jesus up, he will lift you up. Everybody wants God in their life. Everybody wants Jesus in their life. So if Jesus is the center of your glory, of, of your ministration, of, your, of the man, your manifestation, he will lift you up with himself. You might just have to pass through the difficult times for a while. It's not forever. I'm here to remind you again that it's for a while. Eventually we come through. May God help us. It shall be like a tree, and it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in a season. Its leaves also shall not wither; whatsoever it doeth shall prosper. That is the promise of God. It might still look as if God, I'm doing it. There's nothing happening. Continue to stay on the on the way of the Lord. Continue to to do it the way God says you should do it, and you will find the results. Don't listen to this pastor that I say you must have it by force. You must have it na 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 na. You must pull it. You must go and make one sacrifice to make it done. Ah, no, it's not the will of God. Though. May God help us. That's what God is sending me out to preach today. Though. That is not the will of God. Though. Those blessings that they are asking you to by force by force. That is what diviners do. That is what abalists are doing. That is what sorcerers are doing. That is what courses are doing. So why should it come to the church of God again? Don't let it come to the church of God. Don't take such teachings. They will even try to convince you. I'm also doing it. I'm also a Christian. I also sing gospel songs. Look at many of the gospel songs artists that we have today. Some of them, they will have their bush here. Some of them will paint their hair. The men, they will paint their hair as if they are also um, worldly singers. Some of them will even weave their hair. Ah, do they alone? They will weave their hair, claiming they are gospel singers. Some will have tattoos on their body, and they will say they are worship. They are gospel singers. So why would you want to differentiate gospel singer from worldly singer? That is to say that they are no longer singing for God. They might be singing, oh. I appreciate you, Lord. I give you all the glory. It's no longer God they are giving all the glory to. Is that, you see, I mentioned that testimony of that man from the beginning. They are not giving the glory to God. They are serving another demon. So when you are singing their songs with them, you are already worshipping their demon. That's why anytime you feel like singing songs, try to go to all these old hymns. Many of them, were, they were from pure spirit of God. And that man, he said it's, it's every time he finish doing gay. That is when inspirations will come. Imagine a song that was gotten from the spirit of gay. How will that song break chains? How will that song lift your soul from sin? It cannot. It will not. Many of them they do some demonic things in the secret. How would that song be of, be of help to people? You say the spirit of the Lord is upon me to liberate people. I can't remember how they quote it very well. I don't want to go to it. To liberate people. To call the acceptance year of the Lord. To break prison gates for the sinners. For, for everybody. To set captives free. That is the, that is the promise of God. For these children, and then you are claiming you are, you are working for the Lord, and your ministration is not doing all these things. 
You don't even have to force it because some people will say they want to force it and go and collect another power from another demo. It's not your work. Is it not God's work? Allow God to do his work now. The only thing you have to do is consecrate yourself to the Lord. God, I give myself to you. I give myself to you, O Lord, so that you can use me for your glory. You understand? And when you are giving yourself to God, it's in your way of life. It's in, it's in your dressing. It's in standing on the truth of the word of God. It says, stand therefore. After you have done all, then stand. May God help us. I don't know what God wants to bring out from this message to each and every one of us. But I pray that the Lord will use this word of God for every one of us in different ways that we all need it. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the grace to hear this word again this evening. Please be glorified, be magnified. God, I'm just a vessel in your hands. Lord, thank you. You have used me again for your glory. Father, I love how you are using me. Please, God, don't let me become an an empty vessel in your hands. Don't let me become an a used and dumb vessel in your hands. Please have mercy on me. Please, God, continue to use me for your glory. Don't let me become too proud to be used by you. Don't let me leave your side. Don't let my testimony become destroyed. And you say, ah, I cannot use that again. Please, God. I don't want to become that kind of person. Don't let me sin against you. Father, Lord, I pray that the word of God has gone out. Lord, let it help people. I don't know many people you want to send it to. Lord, please, Lord, those people that are battling with, should I sin against God? Should I?